What's up guys, welcome to another UFC Quick Picks here on the Mayo Media Network. We have UFC Vegas 80 this weekend, Grant Dawson versus Bobby Green. In the main event, 11 fights on the slate should be a fun one. Before I get into my picks, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below. Why don't you give me your favorite mid-range play this week? Let's go between 8-6 and 7-6. I think there's a lot of interesting fights in that range. That's probably what's going to separate you from the field this week. Um, I'm always curious to hear what you all have to say. As usual, I'm going to give you my favorite cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and a matchup I like from a DraftKings perspective. And let's get right into it with my cash game play of the week, which is going to be Grant Dawson at 9.4K. All right, rolling with the main event favorite here, Grant Dawson at 9.4K. That top range, uh, Drew Dober 9.5, Joe Pfeiffer 9.3, I think is going to soak up a ton of ownership, Dawson included. I just prefer the main event here, and I just prefer the grappling with Grant Dawson, which is his strength, which is the way he's going to have to beat Bobby Green. He only lands 2.9 strikes per minute, but he's landing 3.7 takedowns per 15 minutes. Has landed, you know, three, two, seven, three, one, two, two, three, six, one takedowns in each of his fights. He doesn't. He's not really an effective striker. He needs to to grapple to win. He's a good wrestler, good back taker, decent submission grappler, um, and he's a heavy, heavy favorite here, minus four thirty eight to win. I, I personally think the line is a little bit wide, but if Dawson wins, he's going to score very well. Um, whether it's by decision over five rounds or whether it's inside the distance, which he has a minus 175 line. So if I'm paying up for anyone this week, it's going to be Grant Dawson at 9.4K in cash games there because of his grappling equity. And I think he's a very strong target in all formats. Next up, my tournament play of the week. I, I'm not I'm not going to give you a super obvious one. I think there's um, a, a few obvious finish here, finishers here on, on this slate, but... I'm going to attack the mid-range more in tournaments a week, more in tournaments this week than in past weeks, and that means taking risks on a lot of these fighters, like I said, between 8.6 and 7.6K. I'm going to give out Johnny Munoz at 8K flat. He is in a pick -em here with Orichi Lang, and I've been on Johnny Munoz quite a bit throughout his UFC career. I'm not particularly high on him anymore. He, he's not a very trustworthy fighter and he's honestly disappointed me in on more than one occasion so this this pick is not a, a lock by any stretch but I do view it as a striker versus grappler matchup in the sense where Orichi Lang is a more effective striker than Johnny Munoz he's a higher volume striker I should say he's a he throws with more intent um, more damaging both guys have already been knocked out in round one. I do worry about Arichi Lang's defense in all areas, but should this fight play out on the feet, I do think Arichi Lang at least has the optics advantage in his favor. Again, higher volume. Um, Munoz is going to want to take this fight to the ground. That's where he excels. He's a high-level submission grappler. He's averaging just about two takedowns per 15 minutes. And look, I mean, Arichi Lang was taken down five times by Cody Durden, three times by Jay Perrin. He wasn't necessarily dominated by them, and we may need domination for Johnny Munoz to be optimal at this price, but I do think it's at least possible, especially considering the dynamic of the matchup and that Munoz will wrestle. So if we project Munoz to land two takedowns, let's say, over 15 minutes, or Ichi Lang's defending at 55%, if Munoz can get on top of him a couple times, I mean, he's a very strong control grappler. He can advance position, and he can threaten for a submission. Is it a guarantee? No, but he's plus 175 to win inside the distance there at 8K. He at least has a ceiling worth targeting in tournaments. Whether or not he comes through is a different story. But I do like the grappling threat and the finishing threat of Munoz on the mat. He'll be my tournament play of the week at 8K. Next up, my salary play of the week. I'm going to roll with Alex Morono at 7.5K. He's the underdog here against Joaquin Buckley. Buckley's minus 170, Morono plus 146. Buckley, I think, has legitimate early knockout potential. He's a more physical fighter here. He throws with a lot of power. And Morono has been hurt multiple times. He's been knocked out multiple times. So playing Buckley in tournaments is fine um, at 8.7K. You will need a knockout, though. I think Morono is the better minute-winning striker 
Um, 5.2 strikes landed per minute, 4.14 absorbed. Buckley's at 3.76 per minute, 3.42 absorbed. Um, Buckley's also been knocked out a couple times. Moreno just... He's just more consistent. He's more consistent, throws higher volume. I mean, he landed 106 significant strikes against Matthew Samuelsberger, um, 90 against Mickey Gall, 176 against Reese McKee, 90 against David Zavada. It's not the greatest level of competition. He went out there and beat Max Griffin by decision. Like, he's very experienced, and Joaquin Buckley, the majority of his success comes via damage. So if he goes out there and knocks Morono out, that's fine. I do think Morono is a live underdog here. On a permanent basis, I think he can win rounds. I think he has some knockout equity. He's plus 350 to win inside the distance. We, we need salary savings on this card. If you want to pay up for Dawson or Pfeiffer or Dober or whoever, you're going to need to save salary somewhere. Um, and yeah, targeting the Ricky Glens of the world is fine if you want to punt completely. But I think the, the mid to upper 7K range is where the majority of the win equity lies in underdogs. And I think Morono is a good example of that. 7.5K. He saves you a good bit of salary. That's one of the real reasons I like him. I do think he has a legit chance to win this fight. I think he's a legit path to victory. Some finishing upside. Um, so I think he's the value side of the money line as well. He'll be my salary play of the week at 7.5K. And finally, my matchup of the week. I'm rolling with Ion Kutalaba versus Felipe Linz. Kutalaba is 8.3K. Linz is 7.9K. Kutalaba a slight favorite. At minus 144, Linz plus 125, and really, I just like the opportunity for this fight to end inside the distance. It's minus 325 to end inside the distance. Kudalaba brings big scores, win or lose. When Kudalaba wins, they come early, usually. His wins, 108, 127, 119, 107, 131. Big, big wins for Kudalaba. And if he wins this fight, it's probably by early knockout. Um... However, when Kudalaba doesn't either win by knockout early or dominate via wrestling, he tends to, to break and he gets finished. And he's been finished in three of his last four fights. And I, I think Linz is the better fighter over 15 minutes. I think Linz is probably the better submission grappler. Linz has power too. And he's hopefully going to be the lower own side of the equation here at 7.9K. I think Linz is a very good tournament option. Um, legitimate finishing upside, plus 215 to win inside the distance. And maybe it won't come early in round one, but Kudalaba has broken multiple times. I think that's the most likely outcome if Linz is to win at all. Either way, the winner projects very, very well on the slate. This is a matchup I want significant exposure to. Um, Kudalaba, I project to be a little bit higher owned, but I think rolling with the underdog side and lens is not a terrible strategy either way great fight to target that's my matchup of the week all right guys thank you so much for the support uh you can follow me on twitter bird apple double t double p daily fan mma.com for all your DraftKings breakdowns needs once again make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video let me know who your standout play in the mid-range is best of luck this week take care everyone we'll talk to y'all soon peace